My name is Hliva Olga. I am the professor of the Institute of Refrigeration Cryotechnology and Eco Energetics of Odessa, Ukraine. My professional interests are in the area of the choice of refrigerant for a better compression refrigeration system. This choice is based on scientific calculation and scientific analysis of market of refrigerant, thermodynamic refrigeration cycles, ecological and energetical analysis of refrigeration systems operated with different refrigerants on life cycle. Last 2000 years, humanity has used the same thermodynamical cycle for refrigeration purposes, but working fluids in this cycle rose at a time. On this slide, we can see the development of refrigerants since 1935. The first mechanical production of cooling was introduced in 1934 and ethyl ethane refrigerant was used. After that, the natural refrigerant was used in refrigeration systems. For example, such natural refrigerant is ammonia and its trade name is present on this slide. Also, such refrigerant is carbon dioxide or CO2 and different hydrocarbon refrigerants, namely isobutane, propane, propylene. These refrigerants were used for more than 100 years, but in the 1930s it became obvious that there were some critical safety issues involving many natural refrigerants, including cases of fires and poisonings caused by leaks of these refrigerants. It was at this time the synthetic safety refrigerants called chlorofluorocarbons of CFCs were invented and began to be used on a global scale. The most widely used refrigerant from this series is R20. We can see its molecular composition on this slide, which consists of two atoms of fluorine and two atoms of chlorine. These refrigerants are safe, non-toxic and are non-flammable compared with natural refrigerants. There were also some attributed names like freons, but the development of synthetic refrigerants continued and in the 1940s the hydrochlorofluorocarbons were introduced. The optimal hydrochlorine fluorocarbon from this series was R22. On this slide we can see its molecular composition which consists of one chlorine atom, two fluorine atoms and one hydrogen atom. However, in the 1970s it was discovered that hydrofluorocarbon and hydrochlorine fluorocarbon and fluorine fluorocarbon refrigerants caused the breakdown of the ozone layer. The chlorine atoms in the molecules of these refrigerants are the most problematic for the ozone layer. As a consequence, the manual protocol, the global phase-down mechanism of substances that deplete the ozone layer, was established. Thus, we need a new refrigerant. A refrigerant with hydrofluorocarbons with the molecular composition of the trade name R134A is presented on this slide. The molecular composition of this refrigerant doesn't contain any chlorine atoms. This refrigerant consists of fluorine, hydrogen and carbon atoms. This refrigerant has a low ozone depletion potential of zero, but this refrigerant from hydrofluorocarbon series 
has a high value of global warming potential. Due to the recognition of climate change, the usage of hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants has been scrutinized in an attempt to reduce their impact on the environment. Scientific investigation shows that the contribution of a mixture of hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants may not currently be a major factor in global warming, but the consumption involved is growing. On this slide we can see the list of specific agreements by years, which considers the environment in terms of refrigeration. The major argument is the Montreal Protocol and Kyoto Protocol. However, in October 2006, the parties of Montreal Protocol agreed of the phase-down of hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants. That plan will start in 2019 in the European Union. On this slide, the global overview of refrigerant regulations are presented, and we can see the most strict requirements are in the European Union. Countries of the European Union are going to reduce hydrofluorocarbon consumption up to five times by 2030. But in other countries, it's also planned to reduce the hydrofluorocarbon consumption and using different refrigeration equipment. So, we need a new refrigerant. Why do we need a new refrigerant now? Because we must keep such argument as the Kyoto Protocol and the Montreal Protocol. And what refrigerant can we use for refrigeration now? Maybe we can return to natural refrigerants? As can we see, the environmental plays an important role when developing and using refrigerants. Looking at various alternatives, everything points of lower global warming potential refrigerants. Such natural refrigerants as Ecofreeze refrigerants have a low global warming potential, and the use of this refrigerant as in refrigeration systems continues to increase the coefficient of performance of this system, compared with the hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants. But there is one feature when it comes to using this refrigerant. This refrigerant is flammable though safety will still be an important factor in regulation of the usage of natural refrigerants. Now we can see the measures of acceptance of high inflammable refrigerants, which are used in smaller refrigeration systems, for example in domestic refrigerators. In the context of being able to handle a flammable refrigerant, two important initiatives were launched in 1950 by the United Nations. This global initiative for a natural refrigerant and the refrigerant diving license are both to develop the service sector to encourage safe service and installation. This initiative addressed the main barriers that currently inhibit the mass introduction of refrigerant that have low global warming potential value, which are natural refrigerants. 
This initiative is becoming important in the global phase-down of hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants. The development of standards is moving towards the wide acceptance of flammable refrigerants, such as natural refrigerants. On this slide we can see an overview of the development of the main standards and the inclusion of flammable refrigerants in these standards. The first standard of usage of flammable refrigerant was developed in 1950. On this slide, the standards that consider the usage of flammable refrigerants are highlighted with the red color but the light red color indicates the standards for small refrigeration systems and the dark red color depicts the standards for large refrigeration systems. As we can see from this slide, only in 2020 will flammable refrigerants be introduced in European countries that prove their usage. However, we accept that such standards will be developed in other countries, such as China, United States. Hydrocarbon was used as a refrigerant in the past, but later it was excluded after the introduction of hydrofluorocarbon, fluorine fluorocarbon and other synthetic non-flammable refrigerants. However, hydrocarbon was returned to the refrigeration sector. Today the most used refrigerants are based on isobutane, and we can see its abbreviation by ASHRAE on this slide alone with its molecular proportions. Also propane, propylene, ethylene, at low temperature and some blends of these refrigerants are widely used. The blends can be used in refrigeration equipment as replacement for hydrofluorocarbon or another synthetic refrigerant. The most widely spread systems with hydrocarbon refrigerant now are household refrigerating appliances, small air conditioners and heat pump systems for domestic usage, automobile air conditioners and small commercial appliances. Recently, the use of hydrocarbon refrigerant has increased in domestic and industrial applications. It's estimated that about 36% of domestic refrigerators and freezers over the world operate with hydrocarbon as the refrigerant and the number of this appliance with hydrocarbon refrigerant is estimated to rise up to 75% by 2020. For the past few years, India and China, the largest refrigerator demanding countries in the world, have been quite active in the application of natural refrigerants hydrocarbon in domestic refrigerators. Over 85% of domestic refrigerator production in China is based on such a refrigerant as isobutane. In recent years, hydrocarbon as a refrigerant has also been commonly used in Germany and the United Kingdom in domestic refrigerators and heat pumps. Commonly, isobutane as a refrigerant has dominated in European refrigerators and freezer section especially for small commercial appliance and for domestic refrigerators, while propane and propylene are used in small heat pumps appliances. Hence, the Ecofreeze refrigerant consisting of hydrocarbon is the promising working fluid for refrigeration systems 
in the framework of Montreal Protocol and Kyoto Protocol and amendment to this protocol. Eco-freeze refrigerants have multiple advantages such as low cost, high efficiency in the appliance of refrigeration systems and eco-friendly properties. But the eco-freeze refrigerants have several characteristic features about what I'm going to tell you in a series of videos. On this slide we can see the purpose of training. In a series of videos I will talk about advantages of eco-freeze refrigerants, mainly how they are environmentally friendly, low cost, high performance in refrigeration systems, refrigerant selection, how we can replace halogenated refrigerants such as hydrofluorocarbon and in refrigerant appliance, the optimal selection of eco-freeze refrigerants. We can talk about the refrigerant properties, compatibility with lubricant materials, general refrigeration system components. Also, we can talk about safety issues, for example, refrigerant charge, flammable properties of this refrigerant, safety standards. Furthermore, we can talk about service maintenance, refrigerant handling, checks to the equipment, refrigerant charge, transportation and storage of cylinders with the refrigerant. We can talk about experimental and theoretical studies related to hydrocarbon in different applications in domestic and commercial refrigeration systems, air conditioning and heat pumps, automotive conditioning systems. Thank you for your attention. See you in another video.